Hello there and thanks for watching this training video. In this video we'll be having a look at how to perform well tie analysis as part of an integrated seismic inversion workflow in Kingdom. This step is a precursor to being able to perform a seismic inversion in Kingdom and is a very important aspect of reservoir characterization. Kingdom is an ideal platform for reservoir characterization as it offers users advanced cross-disciplinary collaboration. Kingdom enables you to leverage inputs from its various modules such as Analytics Explorer, Harmony, S&P Global's engineering platform and provides users with more confidence in their analysis. As you can see here, we can use rock physics from Kingdom Geosyn, petrophysics from Kingdom IP, seismic modeling in Geosyn, seismic data conditioning in Kingdom AVO Pack, visualization in Kingdom View Pack, calibration and prediction in Analytics Explorer, engineering integration with Harmony's Enterprise, and the interpretation of course in Kingdom. All of this comes then into Kingdom in version and with these in, as inputs, you're able to generate high quality results that offer increased insights into your reservoir. Now, these modules link with Kingdom Seismic Inversion with Kingdom Geophysics as a key requirement, enabling you to perform the integration of data with your interpretation and basic uh, time depth functions and mapping. ViewPack allows you to perform enhanced visualization and QC. By using Kingdom Petrophysics, you can condition your log data and calculate petrophysical properties. Geosyn 1D provides you the ability to perform VS estimation and log conditioning, rock physics, wedge model, synthetic modeling, seismic fluid lithology cross plots and modeling, AVO modeling and 2D seismic section modeling of acoustic and petrophysical properties. In AVO pack, you can condition your gathers and QC them, perform AVO analysis and create angle stack data. Wellpack and log to volume can be used to create accurate and detailed background velocity models and also convert depth angle stacks to time. You can use Kingdom Analytics at the beginning and end of your workflow. Data QC is performed here to generate attribute analysis with results and machine learning prediction workflows. Our advantage is that seismic inversion is now made easy. Kingdom Seismic Inversion provides a full suite of inversion workflows through an easy to use toolkit that reduces time spent on task and rework. It can empower geoscientists of all experience levels and enable the interpreter to complete advanced geophysical workflows typically done by a specialist. The software leverages the advantages of Kingdom, combining the latest technology and efficiencies of connection to Kingdom and tools like Kingdom Analytics. Kingdom Seismic Inversion is then a complete suite of inversion methods with a higher value. With the addition of pre-stack inversion and inversion feasibility methods in 2020, we can now compete with leading inversion applications with a much lower cost of ownership. As we look at well tie analysis, the main thought on the topic is, is it an art or a science? You then might be asking, what is well tie analysis? You'd spend the time completing well tie analysis to establish the relationship between well and seismic data. And this is performed by matching the real seismic data with a synthetic. It's the first step in any seismic inversion workflow, but sometimes it is impossible to achieve a successful result with poor quality data. If the well tie is bad, then everything else in the workflow would contain large uncertainties and you would not be able to adequately interpret your impedance results. In this video, we're going to walk through the software and here you'll find the main tool that we're going to use today in the geophysics tab under modeling and it's the single well synthetic. Now, one important aspect to keep in mind is that when editing a well synthetic, you should keep in mind a rule of thumb of a threshold of plus or minus 10% of the original velocity when performing the stretch and squeeze operation. Another consideration is that if seismic data is in zero phase, then it's okay to use a, a statistical wavelet. If the data is not zero phase, then there will be issues in using a statistical wavelet. And as such, you may want to look at using a Walden White wavelet if the logs are in reasonably good condition. 
The stretch squeeze technique is typically performed from the top of the log down and when you're performing the operation you should really be looking for a correlation coefficient over 0.5. That would be reasonable to work with but it's important to iteratively spend time to achieve the highest value permissible for the data that you're working with. For example, a value of 0.7 and above would be desirable. Now we'll go into the software and perform the sequence accordingly. Here we are in Kingdom, and to perform the well tie analysis, we want to select the Geophysics tab at the top here. Then within the well tie and Seismic Modeling section, can click on the Modeling drop-down and then select the Single Well Synthetic. This will populate the Well and Borehole drop-down menu so you can select which well you might want to work on. In this project I'm going to work on this Dixon 128 well and from this point you can press OK and it will um, pop up here with the Synthetic Seismogram parameters. In here you can see on the left hand side the well is selected and you've got the depth type in MD, the distance units in feet uh, and so on in this column here. Over here we've got the ability to select or edit the active time depth chart. Now if you're in a situation where you don't have one then you can create a time depth chart by integrating a log or you can use this option here where a selected time depth chart suggests a time corresponding to the start depth in the log. Now performing this process is outside of the scope of this video. Uh, we already have a time depth chart created so I'm just going to select this just to show you. Now the key thing here is that when this is white, this little icon here, this is not active at the moment even though it looks like it's highlighted. So the main aspect of this step is just ensure that that is dark blue and you can then click on save to ensure that that is ready to go. Now on here once you've got this TD chart selected you can click on the velocity tab and you've got the options for which log you'll use. So in this instance, I'll use the DT. For the density, you have the option to use a constant density. Now this might commonly be two or maybe 2.5. But if you have a log, it would be better to use the log rather than a constant. So in this instance, we'll select the row B density log. Now, when we press OK, the well tie analysis page comes up. You can make this full screen. And in here, you can see that we've got the time depth chart, the time depth chart with the velocity increments, the log velocity DT, so this is our sonic. This is our density. Now, in this instance, it looks like a constant is being used. That's because uh, the log here starts lower down in the data set. So a constant is used up to the part where it started logging. You have the acoustic impedance, the reflectivity coefficient, and the wavelet that's being used. Now, the key thing in this whole process is that the quality of the wavelet is going to impact the overall results that we get. So in here, you can uh, click on this column and right click and you can select input parameters. This pops back up with our little panel here and we've got the wavelet that's being used. So here you can see that an Ormsby wavelet is being used. Now in this case we're going to try and generate a wavelet. So clicking on generate wavelet there are a number of different options that we can work with. You can compute a theoretical wavelet. You can extract a wavelet from seismic traces. This is labeled as frequency matching, but this would be also called a statistical wavelet. You can also extract from seismic traces using the Walden White method, where this looks at the reflection coefficient series and that must be uh, active in the synthetic display. 
So what we'll do first of all is have a look at this Walden White method and continue like this. So from this point, you've got a couple of different options here. So trace, traces within a set distance from a borehole. Uh, we'll use this one for the time being and press next. Again, in your projects, you might want to work within a polygon uh, on the map or with a rectangle on a vertical section display. Now, again, you can see that you've got the well here. It's a vertical well. So here we'll select the data, the seismic type you'd want to have as the amplitudes, and then you can enter a radius. So on here, let's, for example, say we'll have 150 feet and we'll press OK. Now, within the trace information here, you've got the start time and the end time, and you can adjust this accordingly to kind of focus on the area of your area of interest within your data rather than look at the the whole log for example so we'll say that these parameters are okay it's almost 1 to 1.7 and in here we get the wavelet wizard with the walden white deterministic wavelet extraction method now here we can interact with these parameters so for example we might change this to 0.2 and click on update wavelet. You can also change the taper. So for example, let's do a taper of 20 and update that. And you've got the section here of lag and trace for the computed wavelet. So the correlation energy is the standard, but you can also work with the signal to noise ratio the power uh, comparison and the NAG comparison as uh, a method of, of making your assessment. Now, for the purposes of, of this demo, we're just going to work with what we have here and press next. And here you can then save the file. So it's quite handy to use the name and number as a suffix. But in this instance, you might also want to specify what the wavelet type is. So if you're going to be making multiple wavelets, then you can just call this, for example, Walden White and click on Finish. Now, here's one I've done in preparation, so I'll just overwrite that. And at this moment, you could then select this. You could select the wavelet that you'd created and continue on from there. If seismic data is zero phase, then it's okay to use a statistical wavelet. If the data is not zero phase, there will be issues in using the statistical wavelet. If the logs are in reasonably good condition, it would be okay for you to use the Walden White wavelet for the well tie. Now here, what we're going to do is have a look at creating a statistical wavelet. So I'm going to click on generate wavelet, and I'll create the statistical wavelet from the extraction of the seismic traces. Again, you've got the options. We'll select the, the top option with a set distance from the borehole. Select the survey. We've got the amplitude time and we'll say 150 feet as a radius around the well. Here with the trace information, the default setting is look, looking at the whole data available through the log. In this instance, I'm going to, to focus on our target area, so creating a, a one second window. So for your data sets, you, you might also want to do something similar. Now on here, you can see the, the computed wavelet. The sample interval is the resolution of the seismic. So here we'll say that we've got four milliseconds. It may be similar in your data sets. So you might need to make a, a change there. And you can click on compute and update the, the wavelet accordingly. So you've got the length in time, you can adjust these various factors and the phase angle. So this will be a zero phase wavelet that we can proceed with. So we can press next, we can use the well name, and then we can use statistical. So in here, We'll use our statistical that we've got selected and press OK. 
and you can see the wavelet like so. Now at this point, when we start looking through these other columns, we can start to add some extra data here. So all you have to do is right click, select the input parameters, and you've got the reference log within this section. So here we've already got the acoustic impedance selected. There's the DT, but we'll just select gamma ray as an example and press OK. So here you can see that the gamma ray is loaded within this column. You have the synthetic trace and the trace that we want to work with. And in this column, you can right click again, select the input parameters. And this is where you've got the ability to extract a trace using this option. So when you click on this, you've got the ability to determine whether the well is vertical. So the trace extraction area is going to be at the surface location. Or in the case of a deviated well, you'd want to splice along the borehole. You've then got the survey to select. And again, you've got the amplitude in time and you can select one of these. So all within radius, average in radius, or pick nearest. So again, we'll pick nearest. We'll choose 150 feet around the well and press next. And you get a, a little uh, visualization there of the trace nearest the well in green. We'll press next again. And on here, you can see that the naming that it creates automatically has missed out perhaps some of the key element of the well. So we'll just add that in. That could be quite important, especially if you're doing this on multiple wells of similar names. And once you've, you've selected that, you can click on finish. You simply click in the trace name here, select the trace that we've created, press OK, and this gives us the trace in this column. Now, lastly, you've got a negative synthetic. And if you're zooming in and you want more screen space, we can get rid of this. So on here, you can right click again, click on panel visibility and simply untick the negative synthetic and click OK. So in scrolling down here, we can see that we've got the traces that we want to perform the well tie analysis on. And this little button at the top here, show hide cross correlation control is very useful because it gives us the correlation coefficient of the data in its current state. Now, again, the things to look at here is the window length, just to double check that, that you're happy to proceed with that. And what we're then going to do is use the zoom in option and zoom to the relevant section. And if we look slightly above the area we want to work in, we're going to try and put a pin in place. And this is using the hotkey P on the keyboard. And selecting a suitable location for that pin. Now, this will mean that when we use the stretch and squeeze tool, which is the hotkey D, we can then start to align some of these peaks and troughs. Now, you typically use the hotkeys. I'll use the, the buttons so you can see me swapping between them more easily. So as you make your movements, you can see the impact on the correlation coefficient. So once you select a reasonable match, you can then get another pin in that place. And from this point, you're looking through the synthetic and trying to see any obvious connections to the other side. So here, what we're going to do is try and bring this down in alignment with this trough. And we'll put another pin through that peak. We then look at maybe this one and this one. So this one can be squeezed together. You can see that that makes an improvement to the correlation coefficient. So we are heading in the right direction. We can try again. Let's just check this peak ever so slightly. Again, another improvement. And 
and you can just check these various peaks and how they align. In the section here, as you're working through, you can see that the difference in some cases can be marginal, in others it can make quite a, a significant Im improvement. And when we're looking at the pass mark for the correlation coefficient that we'd like to achieve, then typically a reasonably good value would be 0 0.5. So we'll put another pin in there and see if we can get up to 0 0.5. So that's gone slightly the other, other way. And perhaps if we put another uh, pin in, in here, maybe try and align this of this ever so slightly, we will get our result perhaps a bit better. Let's pin across there and bring these down like so. So in the discussion of whether this is science or an art, you can see that the very subtle adjustments are required to get our correlation coefficient up to a point where we consider it to be reasonable. Now, in your data set, it may be that you can achieve a higher level. So, for example, anything towards 0 0.7 would be a very good result. It may be that your data set is of such bad quality that it's impossible to get a good match with the with the well tire analysis and then in that case unfortunately there's very little that you can do with with poor quality data and once you finish this process you can move across here and you can click on the save synthetic so in clicking the little icon there you might want to enter in the synthetic name so we could add a We could add a name in like that. And this is also going to give us the time depth chart. And you can see that it defaults to having the main name followed by edited. So we can make this the save time depth chart and have this active for the well. So in clicking on here, that is that um, process complete. We can close this down. We can undock this window and we can close this section. Back in Kingdom, we now can perform a QC on the synthetic. So, for example, if we select a trace near the well, we can have a look at something like this. So on your data, uh, you might have different displays organized here. We're working in the amplitudes time and we can zoom in to the relevant section. Now, in looking at the display here, we can change the scales. So for example, the seismic tab, and we can, instead of seeing the color raster, we can choose the wiggle traces. And in so doing, press OK. Now, on the background black seismic, you can press F5 and F6 to get the seismic into a reasonable orientation in terms of its uh, scale. And then if you want to have a look at the synthetic here, then you can see that the gain applied here is perhaps too high. So to correct this, you can left click on the green vertical line, which is the well, you can right click and here you've got synthetic display options. 
In se selecting this, you can see that the scale factor is 10. So if we perhaps knock this down in half to five, can click apply. Again, in terms of the match, it, it might perhaps be a bit too, too big. So we'll choose three and you can see that that comes in alignment. Maybe we'll just say 3.2 and that seems to be a fairly nice match. So in adjusting those scales and, and having a look, you can then QC how the wavelet that you've selected is then appropriate for the data. And perhaps you work through several different wavelets and create sev several different synthetics to make comparisons over which selection may be the most appropriate for you. At this moment, if you want to, you can select the Wells tab and Well Explorer. And in the time depth charts, you could then work through and select between the different time depth charts to make them active, etc., to perform your further QC up until the point where you were happy with the correlation provided by the work that you've completed and the wavelet so that the synthetic is in good order and is a fair match to your seismic data. Thank you for spending time watching this tutorial video. If you have any questions, the contact details are listed on the screen as, as you can see, and you can always email us at ci.support at spglobal.com. Please look out for other videos in the Kingdom Seismic Inversion series, where we'll take you through various aspects of the software, all the way from the basic coloured inversion up through the pre-stack. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good day.